Leader, Honorable Members, the next opportunity goes to the Honorable Robert Mbui, Member for Kaviani. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. I think, Madam Speaker, this idea of the Open University of Kenya is very timely. I think it's uh, listening to what is happening and noting that uh, Kenya has spent so much money uh, on distant learning and e-learning from outside there. It's, 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 it's a shock that uh, this was not done ages ago. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the importance of uh, education cannot be gainsaid. It's really an important uh, thing, and especially higher education, um, Madam Speaker. Now, Madam Speaker, if you look at uh, the history of our education in this country, and I will just talk about the time when I was at the university, things were very different from what is happening now. I remember at the university, we were actually paid by the government. We used to receive, boom, about 5,040 shillings every semester. Madam Speaker, we were, we were accommodated by the University Students Accommodation Board. All students were accommodated, we were fed. We were, you know, we, we, we actually benefited a lot. And the government was taking the issue of education very, very seriously. But Madam Speaker, if you look at the situation today, the current situation is that... Uh, University students, their parents have to raise money to pay for them fees. Uh, the cost of uh, living in the university hostels is too high. So what is happening is that a lot of them, um, you probably will be living in the nearby estates. And that is, those are the places where they end up uh, getting involved in drugs and alcohol abuse. But I'm speaker, you know that the cost of living is so high that even those students in the university, they hardly can afford food. And Madam Speaker, when I was at the university, the team for rugby in the University of Nairobi, the mean machine, was actually the champions of the country. Today, I doubt whether any one of those students can actually go and compete favorably outside there because they are malnourished, they don't get enough food because of the cost of living and because of the situation. So Madam Speaker, what, we have, what, what the government has done with this idea is that... Uh, because of the changes that we have faced as a country and because of the changes that are happening all over the world, we have to adapt. And Madam Speaker, what are the changes that we have, we, we have gone through that make us have to go to e-learning and distant learning? One, of course, is that uh, a lot of money has been spent by Kenyans pursuing higher education. They can't afford to do it in our local universities because of uh, the cost. So they've gone and spent a lot of money outside there. So when we do that for ourselves, then we will be saving money for the country. Two, Madam Speaker, there's many more people pursuing university education now than those years back then. So it is, it is a way by which you can have more, more people accessing uh, higher education. So it's really, really a brilliant idea. Of course, uh, Madam Speaker, not to forget that uh, in 2020, we were hit by a disease called COVID-19, which uh, unfortunately... And, and, you know, forced us to shut down our learning institutions. Now, with e-learning, with distant learning, with that concept, education can continue even when we have such life-threatening uh, diseases. So, Madam Speaker, it's really, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, my, in my opinion, I think it's a really a game changer. But, Madam Speaker, I have one major concern. Much as I support this, my concern is about integrity in the education sector in this country. Madam Speaker, every year, we have exams, proper exams, national exams in primary school, in secondary school. And Madam Speaker, almost every year there are cases, rampant cases of exam cheating. And these are people that are frisked before they walk into the exam room. Those exam papers are kept in a, in a, in a store under lock and key in a police station. But still somehow... We still manage to have cases where people have stolen the exam. Some schools are benefiting from the stolen uh, you know, exams. So I'm asking myself, even as we support this, how sure are we that the students that will be online learning and doing exams are the ones that will be getting the certification, Madam Speaker? That is one thing we must figure out to sort out because as a country, we really do have a problem of integrity. And we must make sure that as we do this noble idea, we introduce systems to make sure that those that are registered in those universities are the ones that will learn there and are the ones that will do the exam there. And then with those few remarks, Madam Speaker, I support. Thank you very much. Uh, the Honorable Rindikiri Mugambi, member for Buri. Uh, thank you.